So once again, I'm Blaze of TPL, and this is Scandal. How's it going, man? Uh, hello. Everything's fine. So those were some pretty awesome games. How do you feel after them? Uh, I feel really great. It was uh, really tough games for us uh, in terms of ping and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. That's pretty much all those online tournaments do have issues like that. But uh, you definitely pulled it out. I mean, working up against that and still at the at last bit, that Divine Rapier, of course, made for a very big flourish. That was an awesome turnaround, especially on the bottom lane when they were pushing your 2 to 3. Very, very exciting. And just how, what were the emotions running right when that worked out for you guys? <sighs> Our emotions were like, uh, what what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, we... Uh, we were losing and uh, we didn't have uh, that much chances, so we just went uh, all in with the Raper and it worked perfectly. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, right now, are you more suited towards playing the offlane now that your stand-in is playing on the mid, or is there is that kind of being a flexible role that you guys can bounce back and forth with? Uh, we actually both can play uh, either uh, safe lane or off lane and mid lane so we can just swap that works that works out very well now there is a lot of speculation as far as your stand-in is that official uh, a lot of people think it's Vigos is that uh, something you can confirm or yeah it's uh, it's Vigos but uh, he was playing as a standing so mm -hmm. nothing much to say okay. do you think he will join Empire or still completely uh... Uh, he probably will be the fifth player for Empire awesome so that's very cool to confirm that, and uh, of course you did very well joining with him. You guys drafted up Queen of Pain for him multiple times over. You feel very confident with him on that? Yeah, Queen of Pain uh, is a great hero overall, and uh, it's one of the signature heroes of Vegas, so <laughs> works out that's very why. Well. Yeah, obviously, de definitely made an impact there. I mean, uh, beating out the puck multiple times over was very, very beneficial and things along those lines. Um, so I was mentioning that you were talking about flexible roles. Is there a specific role that you intend to play with Vigos in your lineup, or is it, again, be a different game to game? Um, excuse me? What do you mean? Like, uh, do you always... Uh, I, I, you said you're flexible. In most games, will Vigos be playing mid, or will you be picking it up pretty frequently yourself? Um, it really depends on a hero or situation, so I can't say. Okay. Like 50% 50 of games I can play mid lane or off lane and Vegas the other role. Absolutely. Now that second game up against a Spectre pick, I'm not sure if you guys, I mean after the Warlock you must have seen it coming, but uh, how do you mm -hmm. guys feel to play against that and just completely uh, exploit its weakness of early game lane weakness? So do you think that, that obviously that played out very nicely for you, uh, is that something that you pretty much feel if they draft against you like that, that you can always uh, overcome it? or? Well, um, I think they made a really big mistake uh, given the triple kill in the in the early game to our trial lane so it was the beginning of the end for them and on top of that we won uh, another two two lanes bottom and mid so all things combined we won of course of course and uh do you feel that you wouldn't have would have won if you didn't go for the divine rapier if you went for something more conservative or you felt that was a necessary uh move to actually be able to pull the game out uh, I think I really think it was necessary move because mm -hmm. we didn't have any any damage to kill him, so the divine raper was the only option. Yeah, seemed like a really really great counter draft. Comparing like they had the phantom lancer and the dark Seer both relying so much on illusions, and then you just hit him with a the keeper light, the queen of pain, and then the gyrocopter with the divine. Uh, really, what could they have possibly done against that in your mind? I mean, getting tons of disables on you, that kind of thing, or. Uh, you mean how could they counter me or yeah, something? Exactly. Um, well, they didn't have uh, they didn't have any hexes or something like that. So I felt uh, really freely in the team fights, uh, and uh, I have BKB as well. So wasn't uh, it wasn't there was no problems for me okay. to just stay and right click in the team fight. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you certainly played it very conservatively when you needed to with making sure you always had an Aegis or a Satanic or uh, whatever. Yeah. It worked out very nicely. So obviously that uh, was long-term, but 
and until that point, it seemed a little bit dicey. Uh, did you uh, were you even concerned that you would get enough money for the divine, or uh, did you think your farm was stable enough that you would at least get to that point, and you were just not sure how it would pan out from there? Um, well, I wasn't farming that well actually, uh, because uh, uh, we had a lot of heroes that need farm, like Storm and Queen of Pain, uh, Keeper of the Light. So. Uh, I actually wanted to make a butterfly or something like that, and then uh, the Divine Rapier came into my mind. <laughs> so we did exactly what we did. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so we see a lot more, almost all your games were aggressive tri lanes where you had a safe lane farmer, uh, mostly you. Um, do you feel that that's pretty much your flavor right now, that's your style, that if you can put pressure on a later game carry and just make sure that you're in 1v1, that you're going to come out on top? Yep, uh, when we see we can uh, prevent enemy carry, carry hero from farming, uh, we do this by just going uh, trialing, an aggressive trialing. And we pick uh, two strong solos that can win their lane. So that's it. Makes sense. Uh, how long do you think it will take, If assuming Vigas does come onto your roster? Uh, first of all, I'm assuming you believe that you can come to a point where Empire was before. Do you think you're going to... Uh, be able to improve what you lost from Phonic and be able to kind of come out even better for it moving on into maybe like international? Um, yeah, definitely. I think this, uh, I, I mean, the roster with Vegas uh, is really, um, it's really nice. So we can improve for sure by training and uh, something like that. Mm hmm. So, uh, obviously there was some drama about the whole issue with Phonic, and that was unfortunate, obviously, for you guys. But uh, now, how do you think you'll fare if you have to face them in the future up against Na'Vi? That's pretty common. They're playing a lot, at least until they move on to China. So, how do you think, if you're going up against the new Na'Vi lineup, uh, do you think you guys can take them? Or? Um, if you practice some, mm, I think we can uh, face them. Easy. Makes a lot of sense, and uh, that's pretty much... Is there any other team that you're on the lookout for, or other teams that you're worried about having to uh, take on full force? Um, I'm personally worried about NTH. Those guys are really cool. Yeah, they've obviously changed their roster recently as well, and they seem actually to be very, very solid. I mean, they've had a bit of a slump, but they're coming out mm -hmm. and kind of going back full swing, so that is something that you're... A little bit concerned about here and there. You kind of have to work and figure out their style a little bit better, huh? Um, they actually their style didn't change that much. Okay. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> they their style didn't change really. So we uh, we we know how they play, and uh, uh, we can probably face them as well. Awesome. Cool. Well, that is great news to hear from you that you're so confident in your team, and from there you can just try to move on to take up any challenge. So uh, congratulations for these games. They were very great games, and uh, from there, I, just, I know it's very late for you, so I won't hold you much longer, but I just appreciate you for coming on for the interview, and uh, have a good one, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. See you. Good games. See you.